these two chairs. I had uh, two different resources for these and I've had these for quite a while so I uh, wanted to uh, build them because I wasn't sure which one I would like better. Uh, this one's by Popular Woodworking and it's called a dock chair. That was this model. The other source came from this book called Outdoor Furniture, uh, Rodale Press. Nick Engler uh, was the author. These are the templates I cut out for these chairs. And you can see there's quite a difference in the radius of these. What I found was that this chair was actually a little bit more comfortable, but for me, it needs to be a little bit taller. I'm six foot five. My wife really likes this one as is, but for me, it needs to be a little bit taller. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create another chair, kind of split the difference between these two radiuses. In order to get my radius, what I've done is I've taken a thin board here and I've drilled some holes into it. First hole I drilled back here has a nail into it, so it has a place to pivot. And then I measured up at 41 inches and 42 and three quarters inches. That's going to be the seat template. And then for the back template, I've got it at 46 inches and 48 and a half inches. I drilled a hole at each of those spots and then I put a pencil in and drew my lines. Next, I'll cut these out on the bandsaw and get close to that line. So I've taken my templates and I, I rounded over the, where the legs will touch on the bottom here. Then I used the chair that I already built that we know we like some of it um, as a template. So I've got a clamp to this. The, I've got it so the back comes back just a little bit more. I think it's a little bit too upright on this one. So I think this is gonna work nicer here. I tried to keep this back about where this was it's a little bit higher uh, about an inch higher here and then i'm going to have this be about right there so a little more than an inch higher on the front end so now i'm going to mark where they intersect here now i have to mark where the top of this is around that over and I'm going to mark this out about an inch farther here. So this is how they'll go together. And so this is the seat here. I've marked that. And uh, I'll cut that out like that. And then the back is here. And so I'll cut that out like that. So I've got my material. I'm using uh, Western Red Cedar. These actually came from utility poles that uh, a guy milled up. And I bought from him. They're a little more than a one and one quarter inches thick. So now I'm going to use my templates here to draw out where I need to cut these on the bandsaw. There's a lot of knots on here. The most important thing is in this area here where the seat is going to be, um, that needs to be the strongest. So I try to avoid any knots in that area.
And then I'll first uh, just cut them down to manageable pieces using a jigsaw. Now I'm making the seat slats. I cut these to 22 inches and now I'm going to um, mill these up so I get three inch wide slats. All right, so I built this kind of a, uh, a fixture, I guess it's called a jig, uh, whatever you want to call it, but this is going to help me to align the legs and the pieces uh, for when I put this piece together. I've already sanded all the pieces and rounded over the edges, so now it's time to start assembling them. You wouldn't have to build something like this in order to uh, build it if you're just going to build one or two. I'm likely to uh, build many of these and I want to be able to build them quickly uh, so I can sell them. So I wanted to build this jig so I had something uh, so I can put these in quickly and consistently put them together. So it's just a piece of plywood with some 2x4s lined up. These are 20 inches apart and then that way I can line them up on the, on the edge here. I need to make sure that it's touching this 2x4 back here and this end spot that uh, gives me two positive spots to put it in there and then I can just lock them in place there same thing on this side then I can part, start putting the slats at I've got these two by four set up so that I can put this slat right here okay and I know that's where it's going to go and then I also cut a bunch of these spacers and I cut them so that there is an inch overhang on both sides so that I can just hook these over the legs. And then I know that this end needs to just line up with the slat. Then I'm going to pre-drill and screw in two screws on each of these slats. So I've transferred the marks from here that I made earlier onto my piece on both sides and then I know that I need the one that I cut with a 25 degree angle on I didn't show that but uh, I did cut one with a 25 degree angle and that's going to go here and then the one with the 12 degree angle I've got that marked on the other side so that's where that one's going to go
the seats are a little bit easier to assemble. I've got my template again, and I know that this point is the last place I want any slats. So I can place this here, transfer my line, and then I can run a line across there. Okay, so I have uh, for the seat, I drew that line and I have this propped up here so that this is a proud, proud of this, but I know that it fits inside here and I can just kind of, I, I just leave in like about a sixteenth of an inch gap in between uh, those just so that um, it, uh, it doesn't bind when I put it together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in this first piece right here and I'm going to put on the piece that I'm going to put at the very top. And then with these other three pieces I can pretty much just eyeball it. Um, make sure the gaps are the same between all of them or about the same and parallel. I finished this chair with some oil. I used uh, boiled linseed oil. If you don't put oil on it because it's cedar, it'll just gray over time, but it'll still last quite a long time out in the elements.